The coolest feature to me is that it can get through traffic faster than any car in history. We get so many reactions from people watching it, it's amazing. Hi, I'm Rick Woodbury. I'm president and founder of Commuter Cars. I started this company 21 years ago. It was based on an idea that I came up with in 1982. I used to drive a Porsche from Beverly Hills to Hermosa Beach every day and the traffic was horrendous. And I noticed that everybody around me was a single occupant in a car, taking up a whole lane. So I thought everybody wants to get from point A to point B efficiently. And in cities like Los Angeles, there's really no center, there's no hub, it's just everybody goes everywhere. I don't think there's any other answer except doubling lane capacity. This is the Tango Car, a super slim electric vehicle that has created Rick's answer to congested city driving. Well, the coolest feature to me is that it can get through traffic faster than any car in history. Same width as a Harley Davidson motorcycle. You just come up to a stoplight, but instead of waiting in line behind all the other cars, you just go right up the line in between and you filter. On the inside, well, it's uh, very comfortable. You're right in the center of the car. You know, you're on the driver's side on both sides, so it's very convenient. You look out either window, you've got better visibility, you can see exactly what's happening around you. You've got better visibility than any car I've ever had. You can fit two people. This has a Momo steering wheel. This is actually used by race cars, the Motec Dash. Four-point shoulder harness. The pilots of commercial aircraft use these exact harnesses. With a comfortable and easy to drive interior, what is it like to drive a car like this? It handles really well. We know it has a super low center of gravity, being that it has a uh, dry sump engine that's opposed, so it's got a lower center of gravity than just about any other car. I've had it up to 120 miles an hour, so the, the length is 102 inches, the same width of a semi-truck, so it can park perpendicular to the curb. This is the chassis, and this is the roll cage that is certified by FIA for a 200 mile an hour race car. So there's about four times more impact protection here than there is in a standard production car. To me, this car is safer than any other car on the road because it can avoid accidents better than any other car. This has the same rollover threshold as a 911 Porsche. It turns instantly, unlike a motorcycle, which has to counter steer before it can turn to avoid a collision. The Tango debuted in 2005, and after actor George Clooney bought one, the car became a runaway success. Due to the nature of the build, the company can only produce a certain amount. It took 10 employees about three years to get nine and a half cars built, and this is number 10. <laughs> been quite a few more years, but also it's a lot more complicated. We've spent a couple of years just developing the new lithium pack for this one, but there have been constant upgrades over the years just to get the lithium batteries and the management systems to handle them. This is the car that we sold to a customer in Perth, Australia. And uh, it's uh, in the process of assembly, but mostly it's waiting on completion of the battery pack. The battery box is here. This whole, the whole bottom of the car is battery. There's 90 kilowatt hours of battery in there, which will give us about 300 miles of range. With all the work needed to create these slender vehicles, the production costs can't be that cheap. These cars have cost an average of $420,000 each to build. And unsurprisingly, out on the road, this car gets a lot of attention. Hi, sure, of course. Thank you. Yeah. This is so cool that you got this done. I'm, I'm so impressed with you. I mean, that's, that's an amazing thing. We get so many reactions from people watching it. It's amazing. Sometimes we have two people, both the driver and a passenger, both photographing the car as we're going down the highway. Grabs a lot of attention. Every time anyone sees this car, they have a huge smile on their face. Smaller than I remember. I've loved weird cars my whole life. It's kind of a ludicrous idea. The world's smallest car. Sometimes it doesn't start very quickly. Sometimes it does. This was my worst fear. It's red. It's rare. It's really tiny. 
the smallest production car ever built. This mini marvel from the swinging 60s is the Peel P50. The P-50 came out of the Isle of Man, which is a small island between Ireland and England. Basically, the concept was a little car that you could use in the city. I've loved weird cars my whole life. It's kind of a ludicrous idea in the fact they only made 49 of them. There was a gentleman in Vancouver, British Columbia, that wanted to import them. He brought in, I've heard, numbers three to six, which is a huge number of the overall production. This is one of those cars because it had some special features for the Canadian market, which makes it really special, I think. At just one metre high and less than a metre wide, this really is a truly minute machine. The P50 is powered by a DKW 49cc engine and has a top speed of 37 miles per hour and 4.2 horsepower. It's a one-seater, one headlight. I also love how it's three wheels. So the back wheel is the one that is driving it with a chain from a little moped engine. It's got this cool suicide door. And you have to be kind of smart to get in. So you have to bend like this. There you go. Easy as that. Here's the gear shifter, this orange little contraption. It's three speeds, there's no reverse because you have to get out of the car and go around to the reversing handle, pick up the car and turn it around and then get back in. This may be a small car, but it has a big history. There was a Russian freighter that came into the port of Vancouver. They used it to drive around their huge freighter on the deck. But then the refrigerator broke, so when they came back they traded this car in on a refrigerator. It was in this ship supply store sitting there for $100. This gentleman named uh, Wendy bought it and brought it home for his son Don 50 years ago. And that's who I bought it from, that family. While it was bought for a song half a century ago, if you're lucky enough to find one up for grabs now, expect to pay big bucks. A P50 was sold at auction in 2016 for $176,000. Peel actually made two models, this was their first one, and then they built another one that looks like a little flying saucer, and that's called a Trident, and that's what I was actually after. I was just playing online, looking around, and as I was searching, I found this one. It was in Kelowna, British Columbia, five, six hours away. When it came to restoring this vehicle, Greg had his work cut out. It was very complete, but I needed a number of things. The hardest part of restoring the car was just finding the parts and waiting months and months and months to get them from England. Once in its life, it had been chopped into a convertible. Luckily, the roof had been kept and put back on, but there was lots of little pieces that had gone missing over that time. We got a new door and had that fitted. I've never really restored a car from the ground up, so this was a great opportunity for me to do that. And now, having not seen the car since its restoration, the previous owners have come to check out Greg's handiwork. Where did you get the mirror? <laughs> oh, it makes me want to cry. It's so adorable. It looks so smaller than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Same seat. Oh, Same seat. You just reupholstered? Yeah, reupholstered, yeah. Because they used to tell us our seat was wrong. I found another BC car, you and did. it has that seat. Really? Yep. I was so like, we didn't yes. Have a real one. Yes. Where did you find another BC car? Eastern Washington. I'm a sleuth. Oh, totally. I love it. I'm a car detective. I learned to drive on this. <laughs> At six and a half. At six and a half. <laughs> way before my license came out. Straighten out all the wheels. My husband was on his way home from work one day, and he had to pass this secondhand store, and it was sitting on a shelf in the window. And he screeched to a halt and ran in and said, I want that. <laughs> it was payday that day. So no groceries, but came home with a car. Yes, no groceries, but a car. I don't think you were that happy that day. No, I was going to kick him right from here to eternity. <laughs> the chrome on the inside of the engine where it breathes. I know, and you can't just, see it. It was cut like this. He kept flipping it all the time. Couldn't get he out. Couldn't get out, so he took the top off. Every time it landed, it landed on the door. <laughs>
Oh, that's the windshield washer. That is the windshield washer. And you've got it in the ashtray. <laughs> that is the holder for it. It wasn't the ashtray. It wasn't the ashtray. Ah, I thought it was the ashtray too. <laughs> oh, you squeeze the bottle and it spits out the way. I did drive it to school one time. <laughs> yes. You drove it, it to school? Yeah, it was grade four. And at recess, I got in the car and drove out into the soccer field. I remember having 11 children on the car, hanging on the outside, on the front, and maybe that's what happened to the rear view mirror. <laughs> the teachers got wind of what was going on. I finally did get slowed down, and then I got a couple of days off school for free. <laughs> and I think dad had to come and get me. Looks better than it ever has in its life, I'm sure. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. Gives you such a good feeling. You know when you look back as a child, things always have a rosy look? I'm looking at this thinking, damn, that was a pretty good childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Every time anyone sees this car, they have a huge smile on their face. And that's really fun to be around. This fully functional one-off build is a perfect replica of a 1949 classic, only smaller, a whole lot smaller. Mary Copper, Arizona is home to not just one, but an entire museum of mini motors, all lovingly built from scratch by Ernie Adams. This museum has been running for eight or nine years. First off, I built the one out of nine refrigerators was a, like a 28 Chevy. Not an exact replica, but that's what it looks most like. It's got a two-cylinder owning motor in it with a factory flywheel and clutch and pressure plate and a three-speed transmission out of a three-wheel mail cart. This is the part of the refrigerator that went against the wall. The body was nothing but a refrigerator laying down, and I've cut the door in 10 inch pieces to make the top. Since his recycled refrigerator Chevy replica, Ernie's gone on to complete a whole fleet of dwarf cars. And one of the gems of his collection is the Mercury. This Mercury was built just a couple of years before 2009, because that's when it was licensed. This is a 49 Mercury two-door coupe called Rebel Rouser. Everything is homemade from scratch. It was all built from flat sheet metal. The bumpers, the, the headlight bezels, the complete park lights, the grill. It's got a 1982 Starlet motor in it, which is Toyota, 1290cc. I got to use a garden tractor battery. It's got a five-speed transmission. It's got everything the real car had in it. Glove box, radio, heater, defrosters. When it comes to the dash, I've homemade all the knobs and everything. I make all the face for the gauges. I make the steering wheel and the horn rim. Any automotive parts in here, like the windshield wiper transmission, Toyota. If I open the trunk, it's got spare tire, jack, and a wheel wrench in there, and two chairs to sit on. One for me and one for my lady friend. This mini marvel took Ernie five years to build. And it's not just a showpiece. This vehicle's fully street legal and packs an impressive top speed of 100 miles per hour. And with so many quality little builds under his belt, it's no surprise that the only thing that isn't little in the museum is the collection of trophies these cars have won. Now one of them I got, uh, I had another fellow's wife with me and it, it barely fit in the little car and people asked me if I was gonna leave the trophy and take my wife or, or leave my wife and take the trophy. I said, hell, I'm taking the trophy, that's somebody else's wife. <laughs> And if you're thinking you'd like to get your hands on one of these mini motors, think again. No amount of money 
is going to make Ernie part with one of his precious creations. No, I haven't sold any of them. They're just not for sale. One fellow went to 450000 to buy this Mercury, but I kept saying it wasn't for sale, and I told him he was just blowing smoke trying to get me to say I would sell it, and he said, no, sir, I can afford it. That's the biggest offer I've ever had. And Ernie's not done yet. There's one more build on the cards. Yes, I'm finishing up a 1904 Oldsmobile pie wagon, but that will be the last one I build. I put a lot of effort in making it practical, but it has also proven to be real fun to drive. Podride is an all-weather, four-wheeled e-bike that looks like a miniature car. Hi, my name is Michael and I am the designer of Podride. The basic idea with Podride is to have a weather protected and more comfortable bicycle. My solution is this four-wheeled, fully covered bicycle car. Sports enthusiast Michael designed Podride in his home country, Sweden, to cope with the inconsistent climate that prevented him from cycling to work. Podride has an electric motor that allows drivers to adjust the level of assistance in order to travel further, easier and cheaper. It is small and have a short turning radius to work well on bikeways and in other city environments. We drive on both rear wheels and many gears. It can even take on steeper hills and rough terrain. The range is about 60 km. The top speed with engine is 25 km an hour. This makes it a street legal e-bike here in Sweden and most other countries. Podride lets users sit at the same height as normal cars, so other drivers can see that it's a serious road vehicle. And this all-terrain e-bike not only performs well, it's practical too. There is room for some baggage in the back, and if you want to bring your children, or you need more baggage, you can hook on a bike trailer. In the front I have an extra air inlet, headlights and indicator. It has a 250 watts crankshaft engine with air suspension, a comfortable and padded seat and a recumbent seating position. You end up getting a very comfortable ride. You steer with sticks on the side and brake with handles. To get better ventilation in the summer you can open up the lower part of the front window and also both the side windows. I use this small electric heater to defrost the windows when parked outside in winter. Michael and the Podride team are hoping to put the first batch of models on sale later this year with an exact price yet to be confirmed. It's still just a prototype, but I've been driving it to work for more than a year now and it has proven to work very well. <laughs> 